Hello! In this video, we're going to go through the introduction to InDesign, where we're going to create a new document, play with simple shapes and with some text tools. So let's begin. We're going to create a new document and I would like you to create an A4 document for this exercise. Here on the screen you can see some preset details for your document, where you can change your units, change the size of your document, orientation from portrait to landscape, binding, and you will need to change it to left to right because we're going to um, use the document in English. Also, you can add more pages, create columns and decide on spaces in between them, and set up your margins, and set up bleed and slug, which is important if you're printing your document. At the moment, we're just going to create one page document without changing other settings, so let's begin. So as you can see, InDesign area is very similar in the layout to Illustrator to Photoshop, as it's from the same group of software. You've got your tools on the side, your control menu, your main menu, and your widgets on sides. Your area might look a bit different than mine. Uh, you can always reset your area to the original place, but I would always suggest that you've got controls open so you can see all of the different options you've got for different tools. In the widgets for pages, you can see that at the moment I have only one page. On the bottom, I could add more pages to my documents and I can also delete those pages should I need to. InDesign is fantastic to um, organize booklets, play book layouts and things like that. So you definitely want to get yourself accustomed with that. Okay, so we are going to create some shapes very similar to as we would do with Illustrator. You've got some shapes you can choose from. If you want to create a shape that is perfect, it should, that would lock its proportions. If you want to change the color of the shape, you can do it from a very similar place on the tools menu. The color picker is a bit different, so it takes a bit of time to get used to choosing those colors. So I'm going to change the color on this shape as well. You can create a custom shapes by using pen tool. So I'm going to choose the pen tool by clicking. I can create straight lines, clicking and dragging. I can create curved lines. I always need to click on the first anchor to finish my shape. I'm going to add a different color to that shape as well. So you can see that the shapes are being built on top of one another. Uh, what if I would like to move those shapes around in the stack? So I can go to Object from the top menu and I can arrange it. So I can either use it from here, so I'm going to send this shape straight to the back. I can also use Command Brackets to move my shape around in the stack. I would like you to try that. What I'm also going to do, I'm going to make these shapes bigger. Sometimes when you create your layouts, you got shapes that you, you're happy with and you don't want to adjust them, you want to them to stay where they are. So for example, that grey rectangle, I might want to use it as a background on my, my page. I don't want to keep selecting it and dragging it around. That might be annoying. So I'm going to open Layers menu to help me to lock this object. I'm going to go to Windows and click on Layers. It will open a widget for Layer. So you can see whichever shape I've got selected, it's going to show me in the stack which one it is. So I'm going to press on my rectangle 
it's highlighted here, that's my selected trait. And I'm going to click next to the little eye. And that's going to lock this object in space. So I can still move the other two objects. But the first one, it's locked. If I want to change something about it, I'll need to unlock it first. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit onto the bottom of my page and I'm going to show you some text options now. So first I will just copy some sort of a text. Okay. So I've got some text copied. I will go to the text menu and you can't just write straight away on the document. You need to show the program where's the space that you want to write. So I'm going to draw a text box and now I can copy my text in. I'm just going to change this text into a bigger text so you can see it a bit more clearly. Okay, so a few things about it. As we are in the UAE, the standard text is going to be set up for Arabic language. We're writing in English, so we would like to have a settings for English. So that's where I would change that. So I'm going to change the setting to English. That will make sure that, you know, all of the full stops are going in the right place and you can use your apostrophes and so on correctly. Okay, so we're going to look on the different tools and different options for the text. We've got two tabs in our control menu. The top one, it will deal with the text. The bottom one, it will deal with paragraph. And that's how you will change from both of them. So let's start with the paragraph. So those options are connected to all of the things that you will find in Word documents. So I could select my text. I could give it a different alignment. I could create an indent. I can do it from both sides. I could create an indent only on my first line or only on my first line. Okay. So that's the options that you will use quite a lot on the paragraph. Now we're going to switch to the text options. So we can change the font and we can change the type of the font in the text. So grab a part of the text and pick up a font that you would like to use. So maybe I'm going to change this text into that one. It must be a little bit smaller. And it may be this and maybe I will try a font that I know that I definitely have. I can see women. And maybe here I'm going to change it into Aria. You can change uh, the type of the font. More fonts you've got installed, more options you might get for that font. So for, uh, for example, for Adobe, I've got quite a few options. So I can highlight this part and make it bold. I can highlight maybe this word here. And I'm going to make it italic. And I'm going to highlight this word here. And I'm going to make it bold and italics. So those are options that you will also have in Word. However, there is much more that you can do with this text in InDesign. And let's just look on those options. So, so far we've seen how to change the size. So I can make my font bigger or I can make my font smaller in here. The next option we're going to look at is leading. Leading is the space in between the lines. So if I would grab those two lines here, the first two, at the moment my leading is outer, I can make a bigger leading. 
so you can see that the space in between the line is becoming bigger. I'm going to grab those two lines here and I'm going to make the legging much smaller so you can see that the text is going to go over one another. So you've got control on that. There's other things that you can do with your text. I'm going to grab one of the words and I'm going to change all of it into all caps. Other line here so you can see it a bit better. I'm going to do it again, all caps. I can grab a word and change it into small caps. So all of the letters become caps, but the one that uh, been um, uh, written as a high letter, you know, they become high. You can make a superscript, which will move up the letters. You can make a subscript, which will move them to the bottom. You can add a line underneath your writing, underline it, and you can also put a line across of your letters. You can stretch your letters vertically, so you can see that the size of the letters is going to stay the same, but the height of them is going to go higher. You can do this similar with the horizontal effect. So the letters are the same height, but you're stretching them across. You can also add some tilt to your letters, either by doing it manually or writing the number of your angle in the box. And you can move some of your writing higher or lower. So I'm going to move this part higher and I am going to move this part lower. So it's kind of cool, right? Okay, now we're going to look on two really important things. First one is kerning and second one is tracking. And those are two things that students uh, tend to sort of get confused about. So let's just Let's just jump right to it with it. So kerning is responsible to spaces in between the letters, but it's the spacing, it, it's a spacing depending on what type of letters they are. So for example, if I will just zoom in here and I'm just going to look to this word pointing. You can see that some of the letters like I are much smaller than the other letters. There are some other letters coming that are going to take much more space. And then my, when you look on the writing, when you're using some fonts, those uh, letters may look like they are squished a bit to, next to each other. So I'm going to drop those two uh, words. So they're the same words. At the moment, and as a standard, your curling its metric so it just distributes the letters and um, you know with the same amount of spaces in between of them if i will move it now to optic you see that the letters shifted a bit so um that's a setup where you know the smaller letters are going to get a tiny bit more space and the big letters are going to get the more space depending next to which letters they uh, they're sitting so the change is very small, but sometimes with some fonts, it might be necessary to change from metrics to optical to give it a much better flow of writing. Now tracking refers to just adding gaps in between the letters. So the program does not look on what kind of letter it is, it just adds a specific amount of space in between. So here, if I'm going to add some of it, you can see that the letters are just going apart in this part. I can just squeeze letters and they can even start going one on top of another. Okay, so 
I would like you to pause this video, spend probably seven minutes of messing around with shapes and letters, and then please come back and we're going to jump into the rest of the exercise. Okay, so I am going to move now to the exercise two. So what we are going to do, we are going to practice different types of um, writing, uh, different options for the text in your uh, files. So, let me just find it, yeah. okay, so I would like you to add some space into your, some more pages into your document, so you can see at the moment I've got one, and I can just click and add two more spaces, and on first space, I would like you to create six boxes, fill them with the same text, and then play around with that text. So on this document here, you can already see that I've just created six boxes. You can simply create one box, and if you want them to be the same, just copy and paste them, and just arrange them. And when you do that, fill it with the same text. So I grab some text from the file on the blackboard and just copy the bit and put it inside of my text boxes. So you will need to go to the file with all of the details of what you need to change in each of the box. So all of that, those files would need to be in Times New Roman and then they're going to have specific parameters to them. So the first one should be Times New Roman regular and size should be 12 and you should leave the outer legend on. And you can see it's outer because there are brackets next to it. And you will need to change the parameters for each of the boxes. So for example, in box 3, I should have this text as a regular weight, I need it to be much bigger, 24, and I need to leave the outer leading and change it into all caps. Okay, I'm going to show you how all of the examples of the text should look like. And that's all what is to it, so that's exercise two. So stop the video here, spend short amount of time of it, and I will, uh, when you're ready, play, press play, and we're going to do exercise three. Okay, so in exercise three, you will need to create a spread, which is two pages, one next to another, and add some elements to it um, and just arrange it so the pages look like a potentially interesting two pages in the in the booklet or in the book. So in your file add another two pages okay, and arrange them with some colors in the background, some shape, some text, doesn't matter what kind of text you put in it. Here you can see I've just copied the same um, sentence over and over again, but what you try to do in this exercise uh, is to create a balance of color and how those pages look. So for example, if that box was in a totally different color, now this page does not look as balanced as it was before because that purple doesn't really go with that red circle. So. If I would like to use that color, that means that maybe I need to go back and change the color oops, sorry, of my circle 
or, or other elements to balance them out. So for example, I could maybe try a different color here and straight away this design starts looking having a different feeling to it. So you can start in having colors that are a bit more vibrant, more orangey, it's a bit more um, young, a bit more uh, a bit more energetic. And maybe that kind of spread would um, would be using a different type of booklet than the previous one. So that's it. That's exercise three. Um, don't spend more than 20 minutes on it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a start for you to start thinking about arranging elements across different pages. Okay? Thank you very much for watching and listening to me and speak to you soon.